Welcome back. I've got an absolutely fantastic experiment to show you today. What we're going to look at is the Maltese cross experiment and what it shows us about the nature of cathode rays. So first a little bit of background to this experiment. Back in the 1800s, scientists were experimenting with evacuated glass tubes and uh, they sometimes had just a little bit of gas in them. And they had a very negative region at this end, uh, a cathode and an anode at the other end of the tube. But what they noticed was when they put a very high voltage across the tube, they got a shadow on the uh, glass behind uh, the solid metal object in the tube. But around that shadow, there was a strange eerie glow from the glass. They didn't know what this was, but they knew that it came off the back of the tube, the negative or cathode region. So they called these mysterious rays cathode rays. So back in the 1870s, William Crookes was experimenting with all sorts of evacuated glass tubes. And he produced a really rather nice one called the Maltese Cross Experiment. It was a little bit simpler than the one I've got here, but it basically consisted of a metal plate at this end that was connected to a very negative voltage and a Maltese cross about three quarters of the way down the tube that was connected to a very positive voltage. And the glass behind the Maltese cross glowed whenever the tube was switched on. But directly behind the cross, there was never any glow. There was always a shadow. So what we'll do is we'll set up our Maltese cross experiment and I'll show you what he saw. OK, so if you look at our Maltese cross tube, um, it's slightly different from the uh, one that Crookes had because Crookes had a metal plate here that was negative, the Maltese cross that was made positive and a screen. Uh, but what we're going to do um, to make it work just a little bit better and also to reduce the risk of x-rays and to use a lower um, extra high tension power supply is we're actually going to use an electron gun in this end, which is cheating a little bit, uh, but it still shows all the properties of the Maltese cross tube. So I'm going to set this up now so you can see how the apparatus goes together. So I was taught by a brilliant physicist when I was at school and he said always set up the apparatus in front of your students so they understand how it works. So this one has an electron gun in it so we need 6.3 volts to the filament of the electron gun to produce a hot filament which electrons boil off. We're then going to connect the filament to um, or at least a plate by the filament to a very negative voltage about minus 5,000 volts. So that makes this end of the tube very negative. And then we're going to make the front of the electron gun very positive. So that's the connection to the electron gun, uh, which uh, Crookes didn't have. And the Maltese cross is also going to be made very positive too. OK, so we've got everything wired up. All we need to do now is turn it on and see what happens. OK, so let's turn on and see what happens. And I'm going to turn the accelerating voltage down so there is no um, electron beam to start off with. So on it goes. And what we see is an orange glow. Now, Crook never saw this. So this is something different about the apparatus we have at school. Because we're using an electron gun rather than just a flat negative plate of metal, the electron gun has a filament in it, a heater. So what you're seeing there is light from the heater, OK, coming out of the electron gun, hitting the Maltese cross and producing a shadow. So we're going to ignore that. And what we're going to do instead is turn up the accelerating voltage. And there we go. There is that glow. Now, Crook would have seen the glass glowing, so he would have had to have done it in a very dark room. We've got a zinc sulfide fluorescent screen on the front of this tube, and that gives out light when electrons with uh, high energy hit it. it, gives out photons of light, and therefore you can see 
the shadow of the Maltese cross. So let's now look at what scientists thought was going on at the time. And there seem to be two or three competing views. One of them, supported by Heinrich Hertz, was that the glow on the end of the tube was caused by a new form of electromagnetic radiation. OK, you know about the electromagnetic spectrum. There was also a view that it wasn't waves, but in fact it was matter. And these were sort of matter, radiant matter, coming off the uh, cathode. But, of course, it was shown later on by J.J. Thompson that indeed the objects travelling down this tube had mass, but they were much smaller than any matter that we'd seen before. They were subatomic particles. They were negatively charged electrons. So there was obviously quite a bit of work to be done to show what the cathode rays were after the development of the Maltese cross tube. And we had the work of Perrin, which you might look up, and the Perrin tube, which showed that the particles were negative and had charge and could be deflected in magnetic fields. And then along came J.J. Thompson, who worked out the mass of these particles, or at least showed that the mass must be very, very low, almost one two thousandth that of a hydrogen atom. So they couldn't be atoms travelling through the tube. They must be really light subatomic particles, which he named electrons. So let's explain what's happening here. Now I'll do our tube first, which is the school one. So we've got an electron gun here, and you remember that that's a hot filament heating a piece of metal that has a low work function that can give off electrons easily. The electrons are accelerated through a positive anode that is a sort of can with a hole in it, uh, a wide hole, so the electron beam can travel through the vacuum of the tube. Uh, the electrons hit the uh, Maltese cross, which is made out of metal, and that's very positive, so it's attracting the electrons and accelerating them down the tube. But some of the electrons feel the electric field between the negative cathode and the positive Maltese cross anode and are travelling really fast and they overshoot the Maltese cross. They go past it, those are the ones that don't hit it directly, and they hit the front of the tube, release their kinetic energy as light on the zinc sulfide fluorescent screen. So if we had a genuine Crookes tube Maltese cross piece of apparatus here, it would be slightly different, as I said. There'd just be a metal plate here that's negative, a positive Maltese cross that's metal, and the glass at the front of the tube. Now, those tubes weren't perfect vacuums. They weren't hard vacuums. They had a little bit of gas in them. And what happened there was a little bit more complicated. Some of the gas molecules are ionised. That's usually due to uh, self-ionisation or um, being ionised by um, cosmic rays and um, uh, radioactivity going on. Now, if you ionise a gas, you create a negative electron and a positive ion, and the positive ion will be accelerated towards the negative cathode. And if you remember, Crookes tube had just a metal plate. As those positive ions are accelerating back to the cathode, they hit more atoms and eject electrons. They hit the cathode, and as they smash into the cathode, they break off the cathode many, many, many more electrons. So you can see from one accelerating positive ion, we get a whole shower of electrons as it's travelling towards the cathode, and then we get more electrons as it smashes into the cathode. Now those electrons are negative. They will be accelerated in the electric field towards the positive Maltese cross, and if they're directed slightly to the side of the cross, in other words, not directly at it, they'll have so much momentum, they'll pass the cross, crash into the glass at the far end of the tube and cause the glass to glow ever so slightly. So quite a complicated arrangement back in the day. But this piece of apparatus shows really nicely that electrons can't travel through a metal plate and travel 
in straight lines. So just before we finish, I want to say thank you to the school I work at. Um, I've gone on and on and on now, probably for 14 years or more, to say, please, 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 can we buy a Maltese cross tube? Um, they obviously don't make many of these. They're extremely expensive, a sort of one offs. So I think this must have been around £500. But they excited me as experiments when I was a youngster and my teacher took the time to show our class this. So I was keen for you to see it. And if that's the case, it's definitely been worth the money. Great, so I hope you have a better understanding now of the Maltese cross experiment and what it showed about the nature of cathode rays. I'll be making another video very soon, so I look forward to seeing you then.